Hey everybody, welcome back to the Portable Gamer, welcome back to American Truck Simulator, and welcome back to Logan, Utah. Yeah, this is where we left off after our last episode. We're still in our Mac Anthem 48-inch, low top. I really like this truck. I think we're going to drive this for the foreseeable. I don't know if I'll ever like this truck more than the Peterbilt 389, but I certainly do like it. And it's got, uh, by Rabinicus, it's got an MP8 Oh, is it the Maxidine or the Maxi Cruise? Can't remember off the top of my head, but it's 445 horsepower, and we've got our chip fan on the back. We're going to pick up used packaging and start taking it down toward Flagstaff. I doubt we'll finish this episode. It's about 600 miles, but we can at least get started. So, get rid of this, and we've got to go uh, zero miles. That's nice. All right, so it's right over there somewhere. So let's very carefully get turned around here. Something I've noticed about this parking lot in Logan, this traffic is on a very tight loop around this red brick building to our right. So we've got traffic like coming out from around this corner. It's not on a road exactly. I don't know. I don't know what it's doing. SCS is typically pretty good about this stuff, but this is a little, uh, it's a little hokey. I have to say, I don't like it. All right, here's a gap in the traffic. So let's get through here and figure out where it is exactly we're supposed to pick up. So we'll get right across here. Uh, okay, it looks like right across the right across the road there. I don't, I don't know, we don't need fuel, so let's just go pick up and, and get rolling. Right, so I recorded this video for you. It's gonna be a 30 minute video. I recorded like literally 27 minutes of it a minute ago. And just as we were about to get done, just as we were about to wrap up, both my laptop with my DAW on it and this tower did a forced restart for an update. And I do have active hours set. Where do we want to go here? It's across. Okay, it's going to be across and then on the right. I do have active hours set in Windows. So I don't know if this is like security or something. I keep uh, a streamer. I typically have a streamer going on another laptop with the sound turned down just to keep me company during the day. And their system went down right about the same time. So I think Windows just did probably security. Uh, they won't say that. They never fess up to it. But I suspect that Windows just did like a global security patch because it seems like all of my systems and then other people, their systems, everybody's system is going down. So, uh, so I'm gonna have to record this again. <laughs> Fortunately, I can think of some new stuff to talk about, like talking about how awful Microsoft is. They're not. They're not that bad. They just, I don't know. I feel like they have an impossible job. And, uh, and also they suck as a company, as an entity. Do they? I don't know. They're an easy company to hate on. Right, so we'll pull in here, and we'll get this picked up, and then we'll be on our way. Talk a little bit about what is going on. So we'll put right in here. Happy with this render today, too. I think the game looks really good. So we'll turn that off. We'll turn that off. We will take a look here. What are we hauling? What's his name again? We are hauling used packaging to Flagstaff. Fair enough. All right. And where is this? Uh, right there. Uh... Let's get out of let's get out of traffic first. All right, all right. Let's get out of traffic first. Let me turn around here. Uh, yeah, I think that's the way. We'll we won't make a 180. We'll make like a 210. Pull out onto the road a little bit and then back it all the way up and in. I'm not just driving in circles. There's a there's a point to this. Right. So we go right in here. Right here. And let's get this in. Might take a couple of swings. This at a funny angle. I love the spawns. And I love the way they're building these yards. I feel like they're really... Just tricky enough. Right? So we got this trailer spawned on, the, on our... Uh, what would that be? Our right? Our left 
at the moment, but driver's right. And so we gotta crank this thing around, try not to hit the jersey barrier. Might have to straighten it out. Maybe. Maybe, yeah, we'll straighten it out. OCD is a hell of a drug. You know, it's so... Man, I can't wait to see 1.38. If 1.37 was all about sound and 1.38 is all about graphics, I can't wait to see it. And we'll talk about that a little bit today, about what games are capable of doing uh, well beyond what I think of as their reasonable life cycle. Right. Load our cargo. Loaded. Hop right back in here. Lights off. Brake is off. I'm going to put the windows up. Here we go. So, right. I'll go down through my list, top to bottom. I don't really have a list. It's just things I try to remember. So, ETS. Idaho. Summer of 2020. That's the only thing that has a date yet, and it's not its not a very specific date. It's just kind of a, you know what I mean? We'll keep an eye out for that. Iberia and Colorado, TBA, TBD, so we're waiting on those. Next week, we're getting a loco for Train Sim World that's going to be on the Tees Valley line. I'm okay with that. You know how I feel about Dovetail, but I'm okay with that. It looks good, and it is made by Dovetail Proper. The last DLC was made by Rivet. I don't know how I felt about that. I mean, I'm sure they collaborated and there was good QC, etc. But I don't know how I feel about off-brand mods released through a developer. It's either off-brand released by somebody else or it's through the developer. But that sort of hybrid, I don't know. Not 100% comfy with that. So looking forward to that as well. There is a DLC dropping for farm sim for fs19 next week and i am not getting that and that is the first time in a long time that i have not bought a dlc for farm sim going all the way back to 17 going back to 15 yeah as soon as a dlc is released other than the big bud i never bought that one but other than the big bud as soon as a dlc is released i buy it i'm not buying this one there's a couple reasons why i'm not playing fs19 anymore it's probably the most obvious reason Let's get over here. Yeah, let's get over here. Get in the slow lane. It's also, it's expensive. It's like 20 bucks, I think. That's expensive for a DLC. It fits with what Giants said their new model is gonna be. And they never fully elaborated on this. They never fully like filled in the blanks. But the impression that I get is there might not be an FS21. I think we might be riding FS19 for a while. And I think they're going to make money with DLC. They said they're going to focus more on their core audience. And their core audience is the casual console gamer. That is totally cool. I'm a we're out as serious sim farmers. We're out. But there aren't that many of us. And as a business, you know, you got to focus your money your marketing money, you got to focus your R&D, you got to focus the things that you make on the people that are most likely to give you money. McDonald's would love my money, but they're not going to work too hard to get it because they know it's not likely. I do uh, I do like the taste of fast food in sort of a guilty pleasure, late night, on the way home from a show kind of way, but I don't eat that stuff. I mean, when I'm done recording here, I'm going to go make an egg white, spinach, and avocado omelet fold thing I'm not spending any money at McDonald's and they know that they would love to have my money but it's not worth it for them to try to get it and so in business sometimes you just need to focus on the people that are most likely to give you money that's what Giants is doing that's cool but 20 bucks for a DLC I mean you can buy you can get farm sim on sale you can get the whole game for 20 bucks that just seems I don't know that's not working for me and the third thing is I do want to sort of vote with my wallet. And I know, again, like I just said, you know, McDonald's doesn't care that I don't eat at McDonald's. They would love to have my money, but they're fine. They're not going out of business. And Giants is not going out of business. The Farm Sim franchise is not going away. It's disappointing to us as serious Sim farmers. We just happen to be on the wrong side of that equation. That's the way it works out sometimes. But there's nothing wrong with FS19 as a 
as a farming game. It just doesn't work as a farming sim. But you know what? People who want a farming game think it's great. And that's cool for them. It's cool that they have games that they like, that type of gamer, right? They have games that they like. We have games that we like. And I want to talk about that a little bit more as we continue driving here. Because there's another game that I saw this week that really got me thinking about that. So yeah, not going to get that DLC. And what else is coming? Uh, there have been, there've been drops for R Factor and Race Room that I did not see. I saw no like announcements for them and they, they really snuck up on me. And that Loco for Train Sim World is the same way. I had to sort of find it accidentally. So I don't know if developers are sending information to Steam differently now or if Steam is doing something different with the way that they list their headlines. But yeah, I am looking a little harder for DLC. Uh, MotoGP 20 updated. I've been playing a ton of that. I'm really enjoying it. It is, the first time that I played it, I said this is just FS19. FS? MotoGP. I said this is just MotoGP 19. No need to buy this. It does have some incremental differences. The management stuff is fun, but mostly I'm playing it because it's the newest one. When I compare the two, I can't say either one is better than the other. So I'll play this one just because it's newer and it's got updated livery and that sort of thing. So something like FS19 versus FS17, I, I personally think FS17 is superior. And so I'll play FS17. When it comes to MotoGP 19 and MotoGP 20, to me, they're identical. So why not play the newer one? Why not play the one that is being updated? And they did just add uh, Red Bull Rookies, which is funny because I'm about to move from from Moto2, oh, from Moto2 to MotoGP. And I don't enjoy Red Bull Rookies even when I have to do Red Bull Rookies if I'm going to do a full career from Rookies to MotoGP. Even then, I don't enjoy it. But... I don't know. It's like a big deal that they added it, even though I'm not going to use it. I don't know. This is weird that way. I'm a completist. I'm a bit of a hoarder when it comes to DLC and things in games. I want everything. I want all my toys in one basket. So, yeah, been playing a lot of that. Uh, iRacing, this new season, they've added sound. And I went ahead and took the plunge and got the HPD ARX. So I'm racing a little LMP2. And, you know, I don't know what's going on. I did kind of a quick and dirty calculation. I got a Steam achievement from one of my racing sims. It said, you've just driven 2,000 kilometers in practice. All right. So I did some, some quick math, just some, you know, nothing fancy, and just sort of estimated. And I think in the past two years since I got my wheel, I think I've driven about 10,000 miles in race sims. And that's, there's no compression. That's like, those are real miles. And I feel like after two years and 10,000 miles, don't ding me. Nice. Sir. Oh, brother trucker. And this guy. All right. I feel like after two years and 10,000 miles, I feel like I'm finally starting to get it. And I don't have a great wheel. I have a consumer grade Thrustmaster wheel and pedals. I think it feels great. And I get a lot of uh, tactile feedback and information from it. I can't imagine what it's going to feel like when I get my Fanatic system. But for now, this works fine for me. And I feel like... Bypass the way station? Okay. I feel like I'm, I'm able to put it all together after all that practice, after all those hours... And really feel like I'm starting to be a proper sim racer. Feel like I can really uh, see the lap times that the pros turn and go out. And I might not be able to turn that lap time, but I can understand the things to do to get me closer. And I can understand how they're getting that lap time. I understand what I'm doing wrong. I just can't. I don't have the skill to do it right. But at least I understand what the problem is. I don't feel like it's a hack. They're cheating. No, they're not cheating. They're just doing this, and that's letting them go that little bit faster. So that is, that's really satisfying. And what that means is I can drive GTE and LMP2 cars now that do not have ABS. I'm driving a lot of uh, F119, getting ready for F120. I want to be sort of tuned up on that and have a good feeling for the game. 
because I did step away from it for a while. But I'm back into that. I'm trying to put an hour or two a day into that sim, and all sheets and assists are turned off. No traction control, no ABS, and it's. I feel like I could drive the cars all day at, I don't know, call it 95% intensity. Hot lap speed, qualifying lap speed, that's a little different. That feels a little more ragged and a little dicier, but cruising speed, just under maximum intensity, I feel really good, really solid, and I really do feel like I could drive that car all day, like an endurance race, right? Turning hot laps at Le Mans in a GTE car, and it's like I could run 355s all day. 350, right? That's getting a little, like I said, a little more ragged. That's a little scarier. But it wasn't always that way. There were there were times when even turning a, a four-minute lap at Le Mans felt like I was on edge the whole time. And so being able to, to get past that and, and get into almost like a, it almost feels like working, right? You do have to focus, you do have to concentrate, but it doesn't feel like at any minute everything could just go to pieces on you, right? It feels like you're in control, like I'm in control. And that is, that's new. And I have to attribute that to just all the time I've put into trying to be more of a sim racer and less of a racing game player. Sir. Jesus. What? All right. That was, uh, that was a bit unexpected. I don't know what just happened right there. That is, uh, that's not something that I like, that I like to happen. I certainly don't like to have it happen in a video. Uh, I apologize. All right, uh, continuing on. So, yeah, iRacing. Uh, that is, that's going to be fun. I skinned the car, and I'm really looking forward to some Le Mans races, which I have not been able, well, I've been able to do them in the GTE, but I'll be able to do them, I guess, in the, I'll be in the mid-class now, because the LMP1 obviously will be faster than me, and I'll be passing the GTE. So mixed-class racing is always fun, particularly on a big circuit like Le Mans or Silverstone this week is where we are. So yeah, that is very cool. And and that, I guess, is what's got me thinking about, you know, what what is 1.38 going to look like for Truck Sim? Because iRacing, for, for that engine, that game being as old as it is, they continue to find ways to make it look pretty damn good. So it's never going to be, you know, it's never going to win awards for its graphics. But it does look good. And this game, I think, if they make it look better, if they make it look the way they say they can, or this, the way they say they will make it look, I'm really curious to see what that is. Because it's, uh, it's long in the tooth, but it does have its moments. So we'll see about that. Um, and I think that's all I've got for, like, current events. Uh, truck sim, train sim, farm sim, race sims motorcycle sims yeah I think that's about all I got so here's the here's the thing, the other thing I was thinking about here's the thing I want to talk about somebody told me that the Project Cars 3 trailer was out so I tracked it down and I watched it and within like 30 seconds of the trailer starting you got mad drifting brah and then you've got some ramming and from from what I got from the trailer, it looks a lot like old Gran Turismo where you're driving through those like Japanese highway streets, right? Like through a Japanese city with all the crazy like lit up barricades with the arrows on them, right? Really kind of over the top and like nothing I've ever seen in real life. It looks like grid. It looks like Forza Horizon. And it really got me thinking Codemaster Spot, slightly mad. Slightly mad makes Project Cars, Project Cars 2, right? And now Codemaster owns them. Well, Codemaster, I know Codemasters. Just a couple weeks ago, they got the FIA license for WRC. So the next WRC game is not going to be made by Kyloton and Big Ben. It's going to be made by Codemasters. I have no idea what that's going to look like. It could be as simple as them just bringing real WRC rallies and stages and drivers and cars 
into the Dirt Rally franchise. It could be standalone, right? WRC. I don't think it would be WRC 9. I think Kylotun still owns the license for the next one because the, the Codemasters license is supposed to kick in like next year or the year after. I don't know. But it could be the WRC 10, let's call it. Rather than being made by Kylotun and Big Ben, it's going to be made and published by Codemasters. And it'll be its own standalone title, or it could just be, like I said, that they fold that WRC content into Dirt Rally. But either way, I assume that it will be running on the Dirt Rally engine, whatever they, whatever engine they use for Dirt Rally, they'll use for WRC. And I'm really looking forward to that, because I love Dirt Rally. Even though, again, fanboys, you know, they get all re-re and say Richard Burns Rally is the only real race the only real rally sim. Yeah, I disagree. I think Dirt Rally is really good, and I like it. Same with the F1 franchise. Fanboys say it's an arcade game, and it's fake, and it's it, the physics are terrible, the force feedback is terrible. I don't know. I like it. It works fine for me. And I've, I've liked it since um, F1 2017. I've been playing it. I buy it as soon as it comes out, and I really do like it. So I would think that with them having Rally sort of covered, and with them having F1 sort of covered, and with them having uh, a Horizon-style game, a Crew 2-style game covered with Grid 2, I would think that Project Cars 3 would be a lot like Project Cars 2, which is kind of an homage to all types of racing, but primarily sports cars. There's some F1 in there, historical F1, there's Indy cars, but they always felt like sort of a nod to those classes and those eras. Primarily, it was a sports car game. And I thought this would be great. This is Codemaster's response to a set of Corsa Competition. Fantastic. And not so. They're going in another direction. And, and in the same way that FS19 goes in another direction, it's totally cool. Project Cars 3 is not for sim racers. And that's totally cool. Because I came up on games like Forza Horizon and Gran Turismo and Grid. And those are the games you sit on the couch with your buddies. Not this again. Not this again. You sit on the couch with your buddies. You pass the controller around. You drink a beer and you have a great time playing a video game. It's not sim racing. It's not 10,000 miles. It's just fun. You're just having fun playing a game. And that is something that a lot of people are into, particularly console players. And the idea of you know, putting hundreds and hundreds of hours into perfecting a track, taking tenths of a second off, hundreds of a second off your average lap time per session, trying to get down to a theoretical lap time so that you can feel comfortable trying to qualify for an online race that you're gonna do. For a lot of people, that's just mental. That's just dumb, man. I got no interest in doing that. I just like to play a game. Turn the damage off, right? I'm going to use a gamepad. I'm going to use a controller. I'm going to play this video game by myself with my buddies, whatever. And I'm just going to have a good time. It doesn't have to be an ordeal. I'm not looking for a sim. That's cool. And I think games like Crew 2 and Forza Horizons and now Project Cars 3, I think they fill that niche. And that's great, man. I, I'm, not, I'm not upset about that at all. It doesn't bother me at all. We need different kinds of games. I do think it's interesting that Codemasters, having just released Grid 2, would release another game that looks so much like it. And it's possible that Slightly Mad had already finished Project Cars 3 and was just kind of you know, putting the, the final details in place. And so when Codemasters acquired them, it's like, ah, all right, well, what we really wanted was a GT simulator, but we'll go with this instead because it's done and we're not going to redo it, release it next year. Could be something like that. But but I do think it's interesting that a company like Codemasters, like McDonald's, they're not after that sim racing dollar. And I have to say, I can't blame them. I saw a game called Crucible that came out a few weeks ago. It didn't do very well. A lot of people didn't like it. But... You look at a game like that. I look at a game like that, and I think, oh, another fantasy shooter game. Okay. You know, Valorant just came out. There were big drops like that last year. And I'm not talking about, like, mil-spec shooters. Squad or Arma or 
even something like Breakpoint. Total fantasy, right? There's a little, little thing flying around in a straw farmer hat with a jetpack. That's fantasy. And you think, how many games like that could there be? How many games like that could we need? I don't know. As many as, as possible. As many as you can think of. As long as they're good and people buy them. Right? Who cares? There's always room in that genre. And the thing about that genre is the sky's the limit. You know, you don't need to stick to any rules because it's fantasy. You can do whatever you want. But in something like simulation, and particularly something like sim racing, there's a lot of rules. Because everybody is working toward one specific and finite reality, anything that deviates from that stands out. So in sim racing, the goal is to make a 100% immersive game. We may never get there, but the goal is to make a game that is indistinguishable from the, the action, the activity of driving a race car. You can put a race car driver in it and have them drive a few laps and have them say that is 100% identical to driving a race car. I understand we'll never get there, but that's the goal. And if you can't pull that goal off, you're an also ran. It it doesn't matter at that point. You're not going to sort of have a seat at that table of serious race sims. So looking at it from that perspective, it's like, well, maybe there are enough race sims because we've got several really good online race sims with things like R Factor Two, iRacing, and. I guess a set of course, a competition has a pretty decent online presence. I've never raced multiplayer in a set of course, a competition. Sorry, I'm getting quiet because I'm concentrating. Uh, I think we're going to the. Yeah, I see fuel. I see a scale and I see a bed. We're going to the left. Offline, you've got uh, a set of course. Oh. Ooh. I don't know if this game updated. Uh, oh, yeah, I think it did. I think it did update. Brakes feel a little different. And we're only, I think we're on about 65,000 pounds. Brakes feel different. Where are we at? Uh, is it here? Is it here? Is it here? 34,000 pounds. Yeah, that's, that's a feather. I think the brakes may have been tweaked a little bit. So you've got uh, open wheel is covered. You've got sports car covered. You've got rally covered. You've got, I don't know, it's like everything is covered. There's no real space in the sim racing world right now, particularly for something that is not going to be a proper sim game anyway, sim, sim racer. And if you don't remember what happened with Project Cars 2, Project Cars 2 is the game that pissed off everybody because it was too hard to be just a fun sit on your couch with your buddies play a racing game kind of game but it wasn't realistic enough it didn't have good enough physics and it didn't have good enough force feedback for serious sim racers to be into it so it just pissed everybody off it's a great looking game and i really really like project cars 2 it's one of the reasons i was really looking forward to project cars 3 i really was but it seems they've gone in a different direction and you know what that's now we're getting like freezes and surges what is happening Oh, I have a feeling there's another update going on in the background. Even though I just did like a raft of updates a few minutes ago and made absolutely double sure that I did have active hours turned on. I feel like there's something going on in the background. All right, we'll figure it out. Anyway, that's the takeaway from today. Developers need to go where the money is. And it really sucks when you realize as a gamer that one of your favorite franchises or one of your favorite games is not moving in the direction you want it to. But fortunately, there's always plenty of content. There's always plenty of games to play. And there are always plenty of... Uh, there's always good titles everywhere. So it's a little disappointing that Project Cars 3 is not going to be something that I'll buy or play. But I do... I like knowing that plenty of other people are. And that Codemasters is going to continue making money and doing what they do. I guess people hate Codemasters the way I... Well, I don't hate... Try not to hate anything. It's not a healthy emotion. But I feel like a lot of people hate Codemasters the way I sort of hate Dovetail. 
So, good on them. They'll keep doing what they do. And uh, there you have it. Uh, and, then, and then at the end, he just sort of trailed off. 30 minutes exactly. That's what we're always looking for, right? Let's get down to neutral. Neutral, I said. Let's hop out here. We'll call it. Thanks for stopping back to check out the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of American Truck Simulator. We'll see you next time. Take care now.